let's have a quick talk about a function that isn't invertible right now, but if we restrict the domain, it can be invertible. So first off, Hopefully, when you look at this function that we're supposed to find an invertible domain for f of x equals 3x plus 2 squared, you see, ah, that's a quadratic, must be a parabola. Now, perhaps you remember that this, these are transformations from the original parent quadratic that has its vertex 0, 0. This would be a shift left 2, 1, 2. And this would be a vertical stretch by 3. Now, something that has height 0 stays at 0, so this still goes through, let's see, negative 2, 0. But then it goes through the point negative 1, 3. Also goes through the point negative 3, 3, and continues on. I think the y-intercept would be something like 12, so 0, 12, it goes through goes on like that. Well, clearly this doesn't pass the horizontal line test. Uh, it doesn't have one output that's unique for every input. If your output was, say, 3, I wouldn't know which point you started at, negative 3 or negative 1. But here's what I want to say to you. What if you restricted the domain? In other words, what if you said restrict domain to, well, what would you have to restrict it to so that every output would only come from one input? How about negative 2 to infinity? Now, as an aside, okay, what does that do to the range? Well, the range is going to be 0 to infinity, right? When I get an inverse function, it's going to swap the range and the domain, right? So this is the range. My new function, new function f inverse has domain 0 to infinity, and then its range is equal to negative 2 to infinity. So this new function, I'm supposed to say, hey, what height, what value of x would give me a height this high? I'll go over here and I'll say, well, this value of x would, of course. OK, and we do this through the standard approach, right? We take this equation, we swap the input and the output variables. So I'll say x equals 3y plus 2 squared divide by 3. Now, there are two ways to, quote, undo squaring. Um, they both involve the square root. One is plus the square root, and one is minus the square root. Just to emphasize that, I'll put a plus or minus there. And then I'll uh, subtract the 2 over there. So x over 3, the square root of that, plus or minus, minus 2 equals y. Now notice that if you squared both sides of this, you would get to this equation. So that plus or minus is actually necessary to communicate that either the positive or the minus, if you squared it, you would get back to this line. But which of these actually corresponds to the domain and the range that I want? Well, notice x over 3 is inside a square root, so my range is taken care of, my domain is taken care of. But which of these will make sure that I don't get an output below negative 2? Well, clearly it's the positive one. So I'm going to have f inverse of x is the square root positive, the square root of x over 3, minus 2 on the interval 0 to infinity. That's my answer. Now, I just want to point out that it says an invertible domain. There's another invertible domain. If you wanted to, you could actually make the, the domain of your original problem negative infinity to negative 2. There's nothing wrong with that. It would still
be one-to-one -one or invertible on that domain. But that means at the end, your range is going to be different, and it would change right here. So if you wanted that domain, you would have f inverse of x would equal negative the square root of x over 3 minus 2. And the range would still be the same in the original problem, 0 to infinity. So when you flip it, the domain would be the same here. Okay, This would be an acceptable answer also. This is mirroring this piece, this mirroring that piece, this is finding the inverse of the left piece.